okay, I had to go to sleepaway camp every year since I was six, six years old. And uh, it was terrible for me because I was a chronic bedwetter till I was like 15. So it was a nightmare. I learned a lot of skills, like complete disassociation, <laughs> um, making a cot over soaking wet sheets while I stink like piss and pretending like that's not the case. <laughs> what kind of parents would send a chronic bedwetter to sleepaway camp? They must be monsters. No, they're not monsters. Here's the thing, okay, like my dad, his dad beat the shit out of him every day. And then uh, during the school year, he was sent away to, to Goyam, to boarding school, I'm sorry. <laughs> to boarding school. And then at boarding school, he got the shit kicked out of him every day, called a dirty Jew kike, because it was back when like, America was great. <laughs> And then in the summertime, he went to camp and blossomed and was a star and was like everything he wanted to be. And so parents, they just think, you know, he just thought, no, camp is great. It will define her. It will be her joy because that's what it was for me, you know? So I had to go to camp and as a compromise, he would give me joke books because I loved jokes, and then also maybe I'd make friends that way. So I remember this summer I was eight, because I had just learned to read when I was seven. And someone in the audience when I was in Vermont was like, oh, I was four, fucking good for you, I was seven. <laughs> I learned to read when I was seven. So I was eight, I was excited, I had books I was gonna read, and my dad has no boundaries. I don't know if he flipped through these at all or didn't, um, but it was Truly Tasteless Jokes, book one and two. <laughs> and I remember the first joke on the first page. It was like a paragraph long, but I can tell it to you in two seconds. It was Little Red Riding Hood, blah, blah, blah. And then the big bad wolf is like, I'm gonna eat you. And then Little Red Riding Hood's like, eat, eat, eat. Doesn't anybody fuck anymore? And I'm like, what does this mean? Then when I was 30, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's so inappropriate. <laughs> he was, uh, my dad isn't, he has no boundaries. He's not appropriate. I don't really, he, he treated us like bros. Like, um, I remember one time when I was really young, he and my mom went on a double date. And when he came home, he like plopped down on the front hall. There was like a bench in the front hall. And I was sitting there, and I asked him how it went, and he was like, oh, it was the fucking worst. Uh, we were supposed to go out with the Sterlings, and then only Mr. Sterling showed up because he said Mrs. Sterling had a period, and when she gets a period, it comes out like liver. And I'm like, I don't need to know that. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I get it. Like, I'm five, and I don't even need to know that. <laughs> But my dad, um, camp was where he thrived, and like they're still his best friends to this day. His best friends are his friends from camp. And he, he's about to be 80, and they're having a reunion even. And he has a, a picture of all of them uh, when they became counselors. And it's amazing, it's from 1953. And I said, Dad, you have to send me this. And he sent it to me with like a glossary of who everybody is and what they're doing now, and it's like, this is Phil Holman, he's a judge now. This is Arnie Goldstein, you know he owns Martin's House of Cloth. This is Danny Gold. <laughs> Danny Gold once gave Punchy Kramer a BJ and we all watched. <laughs> this is Cy Schwartz, he works at the Clam King. This is ba ba ba, he da da da. This is Morris Simon. This is Punchy Kramer. <laughs> this is, you know, ba ba ba. I'm like, Dad, open with it or close with it. He has no sense. <laughs> so he went to camp all the way up until he became a counselor. And, uh, you know, we think of counselors like as grown ups, but, you know, they're 16 year old kids. So, 
For each camper, he had to fill out a form uh, every week for each camper, and it would say like, is he behaving? Is he sleeping? Did he brush his teeth? Did he go to the bathroom? And under that, it said L slash H. And my dad didn't know what that meant, but he was too embarrassed to ask anybody. So he just used his logic, and he's like, OK, it comes after bathroom, so it must mean loose or hard. <laughs> So for a summer, <laughs> my dad had his campers come get him after they took shits <laughs> so that he could go look at them <laughs> and make a rough guesstimate <laughs> if it was indeed loose or hard. I love that so much. It just means there's like a generation of old men in therapy <laughs> who are like, well, I did have a camp counselor that was like obsessed with my shit. <laughs> you were sexually abused. <laughs> oh, it meant letter home. <laughs> But thank God he didn't ask. That would have been so embarrassing.